Hi ladies and gentlemen, Sean Davies, Colorado Rainsman. Here I am with uh, DeRossi again for the uh, third time working with him since he got in for training. Now obviously DeRossi is a gorgeous Frisian. Um, what I also want you to know is this young man is also a grand champion. He got the highest marks that a gelding could receive at his uh, test in Kentucky. Um, He's a very, very nice horse. He will be up for sale by his owner. Um, we're going to be doing about three to four months worth of training on him to refine him a bit. Uh, he was started a while ago, and like I said, he's been shown in hand and, and received grand champion marks, um, which is very rare for he's just coming five. Now, today, um, the first two days was just a really introduce myself to this young man and he still is working on getting his attention uh, on me so today I'm going to work on that a little bit more so you can see the progression from day one to day three and then I'm going to check him out on some other things I'm going to um, maybe check him out with a sur single and do some ground driving um, I know no don't be scratching on me I'm gonna do some other things. Um, might toss my rope over his uh, butt a little bit and see if I can change directions. A lot of what I do has its foundations in classical work. Um, then a lot of what I'll do, uh, the people at Dressage Barns would like shiver and go, oh my god, what is he doing, that poor horse? Well, I'm getting this poor horse's mind. He is a wonderful guy. He loves attention, but um, you're going to see that he kind of has horsey ADD, very interested in what other things are going on. But the nice thing I noticed today is, boy, wherever I go, this guy is with me. So I'm going to start off just on the halter, moving him around again. So I'm going to come out here. Just ask him to come to me. Stop him right there. Now, see, that's a lot better than it was. He had a little issue where he just crowded my space. So I'm going to now get my hand and energy up and ask him to back up. One, two, good. So let's pet him for that. I really have to reward this, this big old goofy horse because he loves attention and he wants to know that what he's doing is right. So again, I'm going to bring him to me here a little bit. Stop him. Boy, you see how nice he stopped right there? Oop. I'm going to back him up. Get my energy bag. He's so tall, he thinks if he raises his head up, he can avoid my energy, and he's learning that that doesn't work. Now, I'm going to direct over to my left and let him think. I want him moving his shoulder. I'll bring my flag into play and create a little energy and let him step over right there. That was beautiful. Now I'll pivot and just let him go around me. I'll feed a little line out. Now as big as this horse is, I still don't want to have a death grip on, on this lead rope. And again, as he goes around, you see that his head is out a lot. But there he brought it in to me. And I'm going to do something different with my hand than I was doing the first day. And I'm going to put this rope in my hand like this so I can squeeze these fingers. And see, bring his head to me right there. And if I have to, I drive that hip and squeeze those fingers and start getting his attention on me. And that's a beautiful thing right there. We just went all the way around, so I'm going to walk that rear end around. And I really need to put a little effort into that and back that front end up. Get back down. Good boy. Now I'm going to relax right there. Petty. A good boy. Now that was real nice. That was shoot two times working this horse, and that was so much better. Now he does have a tendency to walk over you. Now that's also a byproduct of showing in hand. A lot of young horses showing in hand, you got to be right up there underneath their chin with them, or right next to them, and they get so used to crowding in my space. And I'm just going to say, get the heck out of my space, young man. But later on in life, that becomes such, you know, a, a problem. So he's got to learn. It's spatial awareness. When I 
saying, get back. See, he wants to encroach on me. And as you see right here, I'm going to correct that every time. And now he figured out where to, where to be. So again, I'm going to back him up, send him off to my right. Energy, one and two and three steps. And then I'm going to direct to my right. Even step, push my energy and create this energy with the flag. He's still not really sensitive. He's got to be much more sensitive than that, but he's getting there. Now this right side is his sticky side. He pushes on me with it. And I'm going to get my hand, set on my lead rope. But what I already noticed today, he's shaping up much quicker. Kind of gives me goosebumps. I must not know much, but I know a little something, and he's starting to get what I can know. So I'm going to squeeze my finger right there. Watch that little head come in. Good boy. Oh, this is so much better. He's paying much more attention to me. He glances outside instead of sticking his head outside. Now, if I pick up the pace, I stand up tall here and ask him to pick up the pace right there. I'll give him one little kiss. Now, already, look at his posture. If you looked at the video, the first day video, you see his posture about a thousand times better. Look at him looking in towards me. If I feel him tug, I close my hand and I drive his hip right here. And I'll drive his hip. Oh, and that's beautiful. So I'm going to ask him to come down. Good boy. Now his transitions down were a little bit of a problem for him. Now I'm going to disengage him and send him the other way. I didn't tell him to pick up there, so I'm going to squeeze, squeeze, and drive. I'm going to step towards that rear end a little bit and see if I can't slow him down. Good boy. Now I'm going to change my tool, pick up my rope. I'm going to slow him down first and drive him forward. Good boy. Drive that hip around. Let me get over here so you can see it. I'm going to pick up that eye right there and push towards that hip and direct him right here. Nice step through. Good boy. Now every horse you watch me on, you see me do these same techniques. I don't care if it's a scruffy old Mustang that I have a whole bunch of and wouldn't trade him for the world, or Romeo, a little blue-eyed horse, or a Oldenburg, or a, a Tennessee Walker, or a Fox Trotter. I do all these exercises because every horse needs to be balanced up and be able to give their front end and push their back end and balance their shoulders up here. See, he was a little out of balance and he pushed on me. Now that's better. I'll stand up here, ask him to pick it up a little bit. Now ideally, you won't see me close my hand. That's better. I'm going to look around this ring and, and drive him right there. He's looking at me. I really like that. I'm going to bring him down. Good boy. Now I made him trot there because my hand got tense and lifted the flag. That's me. I was going, why is he trotting? Well, because my hand told him to. So I'm going to change my tool here, pick up my rope, grab his eye and walk towards that rear end and bring that shoulder through. See that right side's a little dull. So I can pick up the pace if I want to and change him and make that right side a little bit. I'm going to put a little pressure on him there and say, hey, when I put that flag towards you, move that rear end around, son. Move that rear end. And then drive that shoulder right there. Let's see if I can get him to pick that up a little bit. I'm going to push and move that shoulder. That was good. And I'm going to push. He wants to drive through that rain. And now I'm going to there we go. So you see a little difference right there. 
This guy's beautiful. Oh, I like that. Push and oh, I like that. You didn't even see it. I better get out here so you can see it. Direct. Drive. Good boy. Direct. Drive. Now we're talking. Now we're talking Frisian. And direct. And move. Good boy. Good boy. Driving. Direct. Then I'll stop him. Good boy. Back him up right there. Good boy. Now I'll pet him. I'm going to bring him out here. Now he should... Yep. He should just calm down right here. Just let him stand. Alright, the difference between day one and day three on that work right there is 500% better. 500% better in three times. And it's getting control of his shoulders, his hips, his head, his mind, directing his feet. That was a beautiful thing. I should quit right now. But, as you all know, I'm a glutton for punishment and I want to put a little more effort into it. This guy really doesn't see people 100% as what he has to pay attention to. So I make him work a little bit more. Because he's got it. He's right there. And he'll get it. He's a good bull. A good bull. There you go. He's a good boy. I'm going to ask that big old head to come down a little bit. Because he has a a little problem sometime with this. He's good at times and at other times he wants to press on me. And I'm saying, let's go. Give me your head. There we go. Just a couple inches. Good boy. If I'm going to put a bridle on this horse or a head stall like today, I want to see if he's had a snaffle bit in his mouth before. He was shown in a snaffle bit. There in hand. Now he's still gets it down to a certain place and I want him to give to me a little bit more. I'm, I'm just holding pressure. I want to see him give to me. And he's still kind of pressing up on me making me work too hard. Good boy. Good boy. So he gets up over top of you and you forget you're there. I'm going to ask him to step back one. Step back one. Good boy. Now, the uh, Frisian people of the world are probably going to just freak out when I uh, show you this. But um, this is my triple soft 50, 60 foot lariat. Before I ground drive him, I want to see where he's at. If there's something on the outside of his hip, touching him, is he going to kick up at it? Is he going to freak out? This thing gets around his tail, is it going to bother me? Because if I've got long lines and I've got them around the hip, I don't want him freaking out and ramming through the bit. So this will help a little bit. I can change his direction and just start desensitizing him with things flopping on him. So first, I want to just send this guy around. I want to kind of round pin him with the lariat. So I may push this shoulder and drive him away from me and get him to move off from me. Now again, I apologize, you won't be able to see a lot. So I'm going to just kind of drive him with my coils around me. I also have a tool that I can help him in his transitions. I can just shake this long lariat and ask him to kind of come down. I'm going to change this camera angle so you can see more than just that far side. So if he blows through my transition, my ask of my transition here, I can just shake that lead rope a little bit and get him to come down. So I'm going to ask him to walk right here. Oh, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. I like that. Now I'll pick him up. And he's trotting off. And then I'm going to ask him to come down. 
and he's slow, so I shake that. And there he's walking. Pick him up. And think walk. Oh, baby. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Good boy. Now I'm going to do something. I'm going to take this rope and toss it over his butt. Now you're going to see him run around a little bit. He's going, oh my god, that thing is on my butt. But the nice thing is, he's over it already. He's pretty much over it. I might put a little pressure on him and see if he's going to be a kicker. He's going, what is that? Come on. I'm going to drive him forward, just like I would if, my, if I had long lines on. So now I've got my long line. So if I push his eye right here, I might be able to do some one rain ground driving right here. So I'm ground driving this guy with this long line. Very good. I'm going to step up in front of him, put a little pressure on that hip, and I'm going to see if he'll get off of it. So now I'm going to a little pressure with that eye. Good boy. And flip the rope over this way. And let him run off. I really like what I see with this guy because he is not freaking out about the rope on his butt. So I can progress on to long lining him. Good boy. He moves off. He moves off a little fast at first, and then he calms down. Look at him just come right down to a walk. That's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. So I'm going to get back in my ground driving position and just ground driving here. I'll push his eye if he comes in on me. Now I'll try to do the turn where you can see it. I'm going to put a little pressure on his hip as I get up in front and walk. Oh, he's doing beautiful and flip that. Flip it. There we go. Now I'm sending him the other way. Good boy. Good boy. And now I'm going to step up here, put a little pressure on that hip. Hey, that's my leg on him, ladies and gentlemen. This rope acts like my leg moving that hip around. So this horse is reading me his book again. He's telling me I can handle that. Good pull. So I get around here and just show you. You take this and flip it. And I get it on that other side. And now I'm going to help him a little bit. I'm going to exhale. If I want to pull his eye right here, look at his butt, and back up, I'm saying don't delay over there. Put a little pressure right there and just reel him in like a fish. There we go. He says, I'll beat that rope over there. Good boy. Now, there's a lot of other exercises you can do with this rope, but that's all I need. I want to be able to lead him by a foot with this. I want to be able to put it over his butt and guide him all over the place. So that was very, very good. Much better than I expected. Alright, last thing I'm going to do with this, let's just see, the last thing I can do with this, I can use this to help me with the pressure, getting off the pressure. I'm going to say, let's lower your head. Good boy. Let's get down here and lower your head. 
Good boy. Oh my goodness. He's a smarty. All right. That was great stuff. Now the th next thing I'm going to do is put a pad on him, a sur single, and see if I can get his uh, head stall with a snaffle on there, and maybe do some side reining and see how he is on that. All these ex exercises are going to tell me where this horse is, so I can kind of make a plan week to week, month to month, where I'm going to take him. If he gets sticky in any one thing, I'm going to fix those things before I move that particular thing on. I can't go too fast on any one certain thing with a horse like this and leave a hole to come back and be filled later. That's one of his issues right now. I decided why attack him up off camera? Let's just see where he's at because you know what? I don't know what he's going to do with any of this stuff. I know he's been ridden a couple times, which is fine, but I'm sure he hasn't been ridden in my kind of tack. And I will be riding this horse in a dressage saddle, so some of you get to laugh at that. Um, at times, I will. Um, other times, he'll be tacked up in a nice big black saddle. But uh, I'm just saying, hey, can you handle this pad? Let's see. This horse, he seems like he can handle quite a bit of stuff. Now, this is a nice big non-slip pad. Of course, I just had it on Isabella, and I'm leaving a whole bunch of white hairs all over him. Good boy. He could pretty much care less about this. Good boy. I'm going to put it on this side. Not many horses that I can stand on the other side of, and you can't see me. Which might be a blessing for many of you. Whoop. Well. I don't think I have to dilly-dally around with that too terribly much. Got my nice big heavy-duty sur single here. He's going, what is that thing? I better check that out. He's a good boy. I'm going to rub him with it. Set it up on his back. Didn't really care too terribly much about that. Good boy. I actually don't see this horse bronking out too much, but you know what? I've been surprised before. One's least likely sometimes to get a wild hare. Just want to send him around. Let him feel that. Well, that feels a little strange there, boss. He's doing fine. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. I'm going to change my tool. I'm going to pick up that eye. Step towards that butt right there. Stop him and send him this way. Good boy. And move him this way. He's showing me beautiful stuff today. His balance is starting to get really so much better. He's not driving that shoulder into me going to the right here today. And I'm looking in front. So I'm extremely pleased with the progress of three days of this horse's attention. If you don't have good attention from a big boy like this, you're going to be in trouble. Slide, step. He's still got to peg that front end. I'm going to back him up right there. Good boy. He says, oh my God, you're killing me. You're going to kill me. Bring him out here and just cinch him up a little bit. So that should have got him situated. Now, a lot of you probably don't ground drive. And it's kind of getting to be a lost art. But ground driving is one of, I would say, the most amazing tools that you can do with these horses. You can get their balance. You don't have to be up on them to start getting your softness off your reins. You can use those reins just like you would if you're riding. 
You don't have to get up there and fight with them. You, if they're going to fight with that bit the first few times, you can be behind them. You can disengage them with one rein. You can do so many different things. You can shape them up, drive that rear end up underneath them, get, start working on that, that, that foundation of your collection. Um, so I want to kind of just get an idea, you know, where he's at with all that. So I'm going to ground drive. So I'm going to be ground driving this horse a lot. Now, this big old monster head, I got to see where he's going to be at with this. And I think we're actually in pretty good shape here. I've got a draft size bit. Now I want to see if I can get this up and get this over his head, good boy, and ask him to drop his head down and bring this under his nose and just get that. And his head, I'm going to work on getting that head down. And these are the things, the balance I want to do. And then I'm going to put my thumb in his mouth yep. and get the bit in there. Now he's too high. I'm going to ask him to bring his head down a bit. He says, what the heck are you doing? Let's just get this thing on today and don't worry about some of it. So I've got a, a large warm blood size head stall here, which looks like it's going to fit pretty good. And I'm going to bring that I'm going to bring that up a little bit. And that's pretty good. And you see right now that he is mouthing that bit just a hair. So before I go to ground drive him, I'm going to send him around a little bit and see if he can get used to that bit again. So I'm going to get back here in ground driving position with my my one rein and he doesn't seem to have a problem with me being behind him. I'm going to shape him right here. He's mouthing that bit a little bit. I'm going to push that hip around. I'm going to drive him straight. I'm doing things that I would do with the long line. Boy. He's doing beautifully. Alright ladies and gentlemen, so I'm set up. I'm going to work him down the rail here. Just see if I can't get him balanced up a little bit on a straightaway. And uh, then I can start changing directions and working him. I'll try to work down this area right here. So, I've got to move him over. So I'm going to push that eye. Get him straightened out first. So he wants to kind of push off my rein. So I'm going to say no. He's thinking here. He's trying to figure out. I'm going to ask him to move over. Good boy. I'm going to ask him to move over. Ask him to move over. He wants to drive forward. I don't want him driving forward. I'm not going to let him go through the bit. I'm going to back him up and move him over. Move him over. Move him over. Stop that. Move him over. Get a leg yield here. There we go. There we go. There we go. Keep going. Keep going. Relax him. Move him over. Move him over. Got to push that front in. Stop. Stop. Got to get off that push. Get off that push.
good boy. this corner. This corner is bugging him. So we're going to work back and forth through that corner. Just like I did with my Lariat. Push that eye. Drive him forward. Just wanting to go where he wants to go, and I've got to get him off. See, he wants to go where he wants to go, and I'm going to say, Close that. Stop. 
Looks like I'm fighting a lot with him. Raise my left rein. Shape him up right here. Shape him up. Push that eye. Shape him up. Drive that hip. Good boy. okay. God, first time he's been ground driven like that, that I know of. He kind of tells me he's iffy. Two or three times down the road, you'll see this beautiful pee off. I could get a pee off out of him right now. But what a great way to end the day. Ladies and gentlemen, boy, have we had a day here with Mr. DeRossi. Ground driving, that's going to really come along. He doesn't know some things. He's asking me, tell me what you want. I asked him, I told him. He balanced it up. He really finished out real nice. And man, what a horse. And he is just going to be a feather light in my hands, I can tell you that. When I get up on him pretty soon and start working and bending him, he's just going to come along. So stay tuned. I know a lot of you are real thrilled to be watching this guy. Um, but we've got a lot of nice horses around this summer to work with. And uh, he's one of them. Rode Isabella again today. She's coming real good with her third ride. So we'll talk to you soon. Colorado Rainsman, Sean Davies.